Okay, everybody, welcome to the Monday, January 10th, regular Cross Lake City Council meeting. Let's stand for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, first on the agenda is approval of the additions to the agenda. And I think we've just got a few bills, correct? Okay. So, somebody. Uh, be before you start, can we have uh, the reason Dave is zooming in and the location? Because that's required. I got that information. I think we need that from Dave. Dave, can you tell us? Sure. It's 752 Avenida Estancia, Unit J, Venice, Florida. Zip code is 34292. And the public is welcomed if they want to come and sit in where I'm sitting right now. Is, is that your residence then? Uh, for three months it is. Okay. And uh, the, reason, the reason you're zooming in is? Because I can't be there. I think that the reason would be that you're in Florida for a couple to three months. Couple to three months? Correct? Yes. Okay. I would like it recorded that way. And um, I think the special meeting should be recorded that way too. I think you'll have to uh, record John Andrews as a medical exemption. It won't matter where he is, but that should be recorded at the special meeting like that too. Do you need a motion for that? Is it's law? It should be policy. I mean, that should. Well, it's the law that you have to state why you're not here and uh, where you are. Uh, zooming in from. I don't think it's a motion, but I think the record should reflect what we just did. But I don't think it requires a motion. We just need okay. to acknowledge that. All right. Thank you. Okay. Now we're looking for a, a motion for the approval of the additions to the agenda. I have an addition to the agenda that I would like considered. Um, I would like to have the council add the planning and zoning interviews or applicants for the planning and zoning position. Add that to the agenda? Yes, as an addition, yes, to, for discussion. Okay. I move we approve the bills and the PNZ interview uh, item. Addition. I second it. Okay, motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Sure. I think she's got a roll All call. Roll call. Did Ted have an additional addition or not? I was going to do it on the city attorney report. Okay, all right. All right. Um, Zebra Wolves. Yes. Herzog. Yes. Nevin. Yes. Andrews. Yes. Shrupp. Yes. Motion carries. Okay, next we have public forum. No action will be taken on any of the issues raised. If appropriate, the issue will be placed on the agenda of a future council meeting. Speaker must state their name and address. Each speaker is given three minutes. Does anybody have anything? Okay, not seeing anybody come up. We'll close public forum. Critical issues, recognition of retiring firefighter. Please, Mr. Lowmiller. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Tonight, we'd like to recognize one of our firefighters that has retired as of December 31st, 2021. Dean Olson, come up, Dean, and the rest of the firefighters. Dean Olson is turning his firefighter gear in after 24 years of service to the city of Cross Lake and our community. Dean has held many positions on the fire department. He's been a firefighter, fire apparatus operator, safety officer during his 24 years of service. He also was the president of the Cross Lake Firefighters Relief Association for many years. We want to thank Dean for his 24 years of commitment to the fire department and the city of Cross Lake. 
We'd also like to thank the Olson family for all the time he has spent with us on Wednesday nights and the hundreds, hundreds of calls that he has responded to. So let's give him a round of applause. One more round of applause, please. Right. We can help you carry it if you want. <laughs> Thank you, Dean. Next on the agenda is Friends of the City Recognition and Char, I'm not sure what we're doing with that. Mike? Okay. I have this if you'd like me to read it, I Please. can. Please. Yep. Uh, I think Peter and Pam Graves are, are here. If you wouldn't mind coming up to the podium, I'll read this. Um, we have an award for you in recognition of your service and commitment to the city of Cross Lake. Peter and Pam Graves are named Friends of the City. We thank you for your dedicated service to the residents of Cross Lake, awarded this 10th day of January 2022, signed by Dave Nevin, Mayor of Cross Lake. I think we have on TJ Zoom. online. Yes, I am online. Let's go ahead, TJ. I really wish I could have been there, but uh, here we go. For those of you who don't know, Pam and Peter are heavily involved in the Parks and Recreation Department. They were the driving force behind the dog parks TJ? development. TJ, a yep. little closer. We can't hear little you closer? very well. Okay. For those of you who don't know, Pam and Peter are heavily involved in the Parks and Recreation Department. They were the driving force behind the dog parks development and the construction of the pickleball facility. They participate in Freddie Bridge, volunteer in the community garden, and give pickleball lessons, and the list goes on. Thank you, Pam and Peter Graves, for all you do. It sure does not go unnoticed. Thank you. Two seconds? Absolutely. I would just like to thank everyone in Cross Lake for how inviting you all were when we first bought our home here many, many years ago, and it was just on weekends until we moved, until we retired and moved here full time, and a whole other world opened up between Monday and Friday. Um, from the realtors who sold us the home to the community center that showed us that there are things to do here in Cross Lake that are very healthy and inviting and community driven. Um, to, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this. And name say, it. say anything. <laughs> okay, say anything. So when we first bought our home, we went over to Andy's to celebrate, and when they heard we had just closed on the house, they bought us, gave us a bottle of wine. So it was just so nice to be welcomed here and to feel like it was a community for even fools that had no idea what they were doing when they were coming here. So we appreciate all that people bring to the town and to your efforts and volunteerism. Um, we appreciate it over the years. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. David, I did hear you say we could say anything. Absolutely. 
I did want to bring my glasses up here and, and read this to make sure that there was an R in friends, so it was not fiends of the city. <laughs> um, and, and truly, this is humbling to be given an award. All that we've done is simply gotten involved in projects that we were interested in and talked to a bunch of people in the city and said, wouldn't this be fun if we could get this going? And it's really been the community itself and the people here that have made it happen. So uh, I thank you, but it's really on behalf of a lot of other people uh, that are in this town. Thank, thank you. you, Peter. Thank you, thank you Pam. Okay, next we have uh, organizational minutes. Oh yeah, Alden, <laughs> I almost forgot you. Sorry. <laughs> I was worried. Yeah. Alden yet. Hardwick has got an update on the playground for us. Well, Equipment. we have good news tonight. When I first came and presented about the playground, we talked about doing the, the first of the five phases. It was we gave you a check for 33000 and you approved going ahead. And we're off to a good start. Next came, and the Dietz family had decided to donate $80,000 to the memorial for Mary Lou Dietz. And we were here, and we celebrated that. We took the pictures. We were really pleased. Tonight, I'm here to say we'd like to go ahead with all five phases of the playground equipment. Uh, we've been getting really good response response from you on the council, response from people. I see I didn't know what stopped me and say, what's going on with this? Um, so we've really been pleased. Tonight, I would like the council to accept a 10,000 check from the um, Christmas for Kids program. And Holly's here to present the check. And we'd like the mayor to come and, and shake her hand and welcome her there. And then Holly, tell a little bit about the organization, will you? Sure. So Christmas for Kids is a nonprofit organization. We have a fundraiser at Massieri's uh, the first Saturday of December every year. We accept donations, monetary, and items. We have the auction. We go out and shop for 68 children just in the Cross Lake area, which is about 27 families. And then we wrap all the gifts, and then they come and pick up all their gifts because of COVID. So we can't deliver. We used to deliver, but we don't deliver anymore. So yeah, so we made uh, 68 kids very, very happy. It's a great organization. Thank you. David, you can come and so give us a check and take some pictures here. Of it. Do I take the check or do I give it? I just did one. Well, I'll just put this whole thing. <laughs> Go into that. So we got that's coming. Um, we've had wonderful response from the community. Just in the last month, let me tell you what's happened. We've had a ten thousand dollar check from the Christmas for Kids you saw here. We had a five thousand dollar anonymous gift. We had a thousand dollars from the American Legion. Six hundred dollars from the Cedar Chest for the funds they'd raised for their Christmas benefit. Uh, Forty-seven hundred and fifty dollars from. 51 individual donations. Just in the last month, we've ex met with the Lions and they've expressed interest in uh, funding part of the project. And so they're gonna confirm what it's gonna be on Wednesday. So we're very, very pleased with the response. And we're just a very little short, but we think have enough to approach, and the total cost is like $240,000. And so we have been really, really pleased. Now we'd like to show you what it is. And Deb, do you want to? We have a nice film of what it will look like.
You can see first, this is the swing set in this placing swing. So a mother with her child is there showing the, uh, doing the swing. And then the little bit of uh, merry-go-round there. And this was then the climbing trees. And this is the refurbishing. Oh, this is the children's with the shade feature. This is the one, the first one that was approved. And this is a current fixture there, the five to 12 year old. And this is the one where we replace the slides that are damaged with uh, the new, new slides, keeping the same frame. There's a merry-go-round again, and now we're going over to the special area, the Mary Lou Dietz Memorial Obstacle Course. And you see the little pods in front where you can go from pod to pod. I think maybe the children can go from pod to pod. And then this is the obstacle course, which can be timed so that people can um, work their way through. And you can see from the overview, we have a really nice layout. And of course, there's more trees than you see in the pictures here. But it'd really be a nice addition to our community. One that I think we'll all be proud of. And you can just see the kids. And if you listen carefully, you can almost hear them. Their joy and shouting with, with the laughter and fun. Um, TJ and I would like to go through now what our next step is, and then uh, ask for a couple motions. Um, as I look at this project, though, I realize what an important legacy this is going to be for the community. And I can picture going there and sitting down, watching the kids, and watching them enjoy it, and then thinking how this was possible. This was possible with donations. It was possible with volunteer work. It was possible by people from the city. Uh, Ted and his public works staff will help us build it. The uh, people that are on the staff at the community center, TJ's people will help, and volunteers will help. And I think, okay, I'm proud then to be part of this project. And I think many of us would be too. And I talked to the Powell Foundation this morning, and I said, when you come and see it, I think you'll want to feel in your mind that you were part of it. And you've approved the project as a committee, but now I'd like you to look at it individually for your own sake and reinforcement in the future and say, I was part of this. And so I say now to the PAL Foundation, to the council themselves, to our community, now is the time to become a donor. It doesn't make any difference how much, we just want something there so you say, I was part of it. And when you see the kids enjoy it for the next 20 years, you can say, okay, I was part that made this possible. And I was part of a live community that does things like this. And I think then we, you'll feel more proud and you'll be a biggest reward that you ever had for doing something like this to say, I was part. So with that, I would say we'd like to go ahead with all five phases, totaling about $240,000, providing we get enough money in. And we're really close, so close that we'd like to make a motion conditional on we get the funding that we order by February 1st. Delivery time is 13 weeks. And they said if we order by the 1st, they would have somebody here by May 1st doing the installation. Well, we all know what a problem it is making deliveries now. And so we surely don't want to delay anymore on our part. And so we want to go ahead. So we're going to ask that. Um, 
TJ, do you want to come in and, and ask talk about the motions now? Sure. Thank you, Alden. Um, give you a little backstory with some of the fundraising efforts and some of the um, budgeted items that we detailed in the phased approach for the playground from the city. Um, there were some items in our initial plan that we would use park dedication funds for the border, the wood chips, some of the other amenities within that playground system. Um, we've identified some more funding needs for this playground uh, equipment. And we are going to be asking that uh, you approve to use up to $50,000 in park dedication funding um, to be put towards this project and to proceed with ordering the full package once we receive enough funding from other sources. Um, and to just touch base on what Alden has been saying, you know, delivery has been hit and miss this past year, year and a half. And we really don't want to miss that time window to where we won't get the equipment until middle of summer, end of summer. And then by the time we're trying to assemble everything, you know, the ground's freezing again. Um, so again, the whole goal is to order the full package once we receive full funding and the $50,000 we, you know, we probably won't use all of that. We're just, it's a kind of a conditional amount. Um, we don't know for sure what we need to pull from park dedication, but just to receive that approval now. So once we get our ducks in a row, we can put that order in and get the ball rolling. So, so TJ, that tells me that you've raised about 190,000 to date. If you're 240 to, working 50 backwards. Roughly speaking, we're still, you know, like Alden said, we met with the Lions. We don't know for sure what they're going to approve at their meeting come Wednesday. Um, so really, we're we're caught up in the air right now. We don't know for sure how much park dedication we would need. Um, we could see some more coming in from the solicitation letters that the Powell Foundation sent out. Um, there could be some other um, citizens or other individuals who want to participate as well. So we we're asking for the fifty just. Up to, we're not going to say, you know, we're, we're spending 50. We're just saying up to, um, so when we receive the other additional funding, we can just go ahead and move forward. Dave, your, your question about 190 is, is right. Okay. So, so you're looking for a not to exceed approval from the council for $50,000 dedicated to come out of the park yep. fund. Park dedication fund. So it's really not coming out of the levy. No, it's, it's just, we're just, yeah. the security, whatever. So phase one was already approved. Yep, in right. phase two, or, fa or the f we call it phase five, the Lou holds, or the Mary Lou Dietz. Yep. So, just so I have it right, for the, for the motion that I'm going to make, um, uh, are you saying that phase two through five you're going to proceed with if we approve it? Yes. Okay. I will make a motion that we proceed or approve with phase two through five, providing the funding is obtained, and to utilize uh, up to 50,000 in the park dedication fund for the playground equipment project. I second that. Okay, any other questions or discussion on it? Char, you ready to take a vote? Sure. John Andrews? Yes. Dave Nevin? Yes. Aaron Herzog? Yes. Marsha Zebra Bulls? Yes. And do we have a Dave Shrupp? Up there. Yes. Yeah. Dave Shrupp? Yes. Motion carries. You went out of sync there a little bit. Well, I was waiting for Dave to get on there. Okay. I want to thank the council. It's been just really a pleasure to work with you. We had personal support. You've talked to me individually. Um, I really feel good of what the, you're doing for the community here. Aldous, so, I want to personally thank you for what you, it's so good to see you back here. <laughs> well, it's fun to be thank back. Thank you for being there. Yeah. Thank you thank for you. what you do. And thank the Pell Foundation. Thank you. Okay, next we're gonna move into the organizational meeting appointments. First is to designate acting mayor, and I make a motion or a nomination to put Marsha, re reinstate Marsha Siebert Voles as acting mayor. It's a motion. A motion? Yep. I'll second. Okay, motion a second.
Nevin? Yes. Andrews? Yes. Shrupp? No. Zebra Bowles? Yeah, abstain. I'll abstain. Herzog? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, next is the appointment of two ex officios to the Fire Relief Association. And it's the mayor and the city administrator. I so move that we do that, or I second it. That's a motion for you, John. All right, I make a motion that we appoint okay. the mayor and the city administrator for the BFX ex officio members of the Fire Relief Association. I'll second it. Okay, sure. Zebert Bowles? Yes. Herzog? Yes. Nevin? Yes. Andrews? Yes. Shrupp? Yes. Motion carries. Next is to approve the regular council meeting uh, as the second Monday of the month at 7 p.m. I'll make the motion that we have the uh, approve the schedule of the regular council meetings for the second Monday of the month at 7 o'clock. I'll second. Herzog? Yes. Nevin? Yes. Andrews? Yes. Shrupp? Yes. Zebra Bowles? Yes. Motion carries. Next is to appoint the official newspaper. Uh, last year we had both papers, Northam Press and the Echo, correct? We've got proposals from both the papers this year. Uh, I don't know that there's really anything to note on them. Anybody want any discussion on the proposals? Northland Press, we should probably do them individually, huh? Do them both matter. together? You can do them together. Okay, a motion to approve the papers? I'll move that we uh, move that the Echo at Publishing and the Northland Press both be our newspapers, both of them. I second it. Dave Shrupp? Yes. Zebert Bowles? Yes. Herzog? Yes. Nevin? Yes. Andrews? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, next is the appointment of legal services. Uh, civil is Brenham Person, Labor, Johnson, Killen, and Sealer, Seiler. Prosecution is Crowing County. Bond counsel is Briggs and Morgan. And bond advisor is David Drone. So I don't see any changes in it. Somebody want to make a I'll, motion? I'll make a motion that we approve the slate of legal services presented. Uh, Breen in person for civil, Johnson, Killen, Sailor for labor, uh, Crow Wing County for prosecuting, uh, Briggs and Morgan for bond counsel, and David Drone, Associates for bond advisor. I second that. Dave Nevin? Yes. Andrews? Yes. Shrupp? Yes. Zebert Bowles? Yes. Herzog? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, six, uh, appointment of city engineer. And I make a motion we reappoint Bolton Mink as a second term of the city's engineer. I'll second that motion. John Andrews? Yes. Shrupp? Yes. Zebra Bowles? Yes. Herzog? Yes. Nevin? Yes. Motion carries. Oh boy, this one's going to be a little conversation here. I tried to change the banks once, didn't I? I don't remember. Yeah. I would, uh, we have been at Fransden Bank for the official depository for 25 years, and I kind of would like to give one of the other banks, maybe specifically First National, a chance at the Citibank account. So I'm going to make that a motion. Do I have a second on it? Yeah, I'll second it. Is there a discussion? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I, uh, anybody have any questions or? Why? Just because I think in a small town we should spread things around a little bit. I, I think that's a good practice and they've had it for, I don't know, Shar, you probably don't know, huh? 20 plus years. We've used all banks in the past. First National, when it was Lakes, they had our um, revolving loan account. And then when we had to give that money back, 
um, we actually gave it to Crowing Power. That's when we closed that account with First National. So that so, was just a couple years ago. For no other reason other than just to change things a little bit, I guess, Dave. Any other comments, questions? Okay, I believe we have a motion in a second. All right. John Andrews? No. Dave Schrupp? Uh, no. Zebert Bowles? Yes. Herzog? Yes. Nevin? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, thank you. Designate signatories on the city checking and savings account. And the signatories are mayor, acting mayor, city administrator, and city clerk. So we need a motion for that. I'll vote you for that we designate the signatures for the city checking and savings to be the mayor, acting mayor, city administrator, and city clerk. I second that. Okay, motion and second. Dave Shrupp? Yes. Zebra Bowles? Yes. Herzog? Yes. Nevin? Yes. Andrews? Yes. Motion carries. Next, uh, number nine, designate electronic fund transfer delegates. Mayor, acting mayor, city administrator, and city clerk. I move that designate electronic fund transfer delegates, mayor, acting mayor, city administrator, and city clerk. Second. Marcia Zebert Bowles? Yes. Herzog? Yes. Nevin? Yes. Andrews? Yes. Shrupp? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, the commission appointments are next. Char, are they all one or do we do them individually? You can do them all as one. All as yep. one? Okay. So for planning and zoning, I, I move that we reappoint Bill Schultz to a second three-year term. Park and Rec Library, I move that we promote or, or update Kara Porter to her first three-year coming off as an, an alternate and Peter Graves' appointment to his first three year. In public works, Tom Swenson to be appointed to his first three year term and Bob Fry appointment to his first three year term. Can, can I ask a question while you're still in it? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, I believe we have zero alternates on the, uh, on the Public Works Commission. Am I correct, Tom? Okay, we have done. Is it viable that we can keep Doug on as, a, as an alternate? I realize he's served his six years, now he's, he's uh, off it, but can we keep him as an alternate so we have an alternate? Well, yeah, I mean, do you think or no, or does he have to step back? I, I guess I... The ordinance says that they're supposed to be off for a year and then they can apply to be back on. So I don't know what that means for an alternate. I think it would probably be okay. I mean, they're not one of the acting members. Um, if there was another choice, I'd say maybe let them take a year off, but if that's the only option, I... I and I would agree with that, yeah. But so, in his absence and without his permission, why don't we put his name on there as an alternate and see if he'll accept it? Well, or I may suggest, Aaron, that we somebody contact him and see if he wants to be. He might want to take a step back for a year or two. Oh, that's fine. I don't <laughs> now, care. should we be appointing alternates at this time if we had them? If you had them, yes. Oh, I, I didn't think of that. I would have I would have had some, I guess. I dropped the ball on that. But other than that, I, I agree with uh, reappointing uh, Bill Schultz, Kara Porter, Peter Graves, Tom Swenson, and Bob Fry. I'll make that a motion. I'll second it. Okay, little discussion on it. I think the other commissions are okay, but if we need some alternates, let's find some. We can do that at any time, correct? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I'd also like to uh, note on your, you have a note on your, Dave. It says thank you to Mick Chida for his services at the uh, Park and Rec Commission, and then to Doug Ver uh, Verba. Viersba. Viersba for the services on the Public Works Commission. Yeah, I thought we'd finish our motion first, yeah. but yeah, let's finish the motion, then we'll acknowledge them. All right. 
You ready to vote? Yep. Uh, question. Vote. Anybody apply for these commissions that have been turned down? In other words, are there other names of people who wanted to be on them and we don't see them because they weren't selected? Not that I've talked to. Okay, thank you. Okay. Aaron Herzog? Yes. Nevin? Yes. Andrews? Yes. Shrupp? Yes. Zebert Bowles? Yes. Motion carries. And I want to welcome and thank Peter Graves and Bob Fry both for stepping up. Peter, you're going for another award, aren't you? <laughs> anyway, thank you. And finally on this is to thank Mick Cheetah and Doug Viersba for their years, six years, I think each they've been on the commission. So I don't see either one of them here, but it's greatly appreciated when people step up and fill those spots. We've got a lot of them to fill in town. Say Dave. Yep. Mick also served on the Public Works Commission at the same time. But he's still there, Dave. He's still on the Public Works. All right. Is Daryl Shannon done on Park and Rec? Yep. So we want to thank him for his time. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Daryl. Anything else you see there? Nope. Now, before we move on, should we have uh, Tom or uh, Ted contact Doug and see if he's willing to do that? As a motion from the council? Well, let's see if he's interested in being an, an alternate. Well, I, I think that we should look for alternates in all the commissions. Well, that's fine. But yeah. yeah. I, I mean, if you want to instruct them to do that, I think they'll do that. But, but go ahead. Yeah. Dad will take care of it. Yeah. Good. Okay. Okay. okay next, we're going to go to the consent calendar. All items here are listed, are considered to be routine by the City Council and will be acted on by one motion. There will be no separate discussion on these items unless a citizen or council member so request. Has everybody looked it over? Yeah. I'd like to pull number five, the balance sheet. Okay. That it? For me. Okay, do we have a motion to approve the rest of them? I move that we approve the rest of the consent calendar. Second. Okay, sure. Dave Nevin? Yes. John Andrews? Yes. Shrupp? Yes. Zebert Bowles? Yes. Herzog? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, Marcia, you want to discuss E5 now? Might as well, huh? Sure. Um, at budget time, I was told that the uh, assigned balance for the police equipment was going to be like $30,000 at the end of the year. It's still at $121,250.09. You were never told that by me? I think in the budget meetings there was discussion about uh, I didn't want to um, budget for police equipment because we had 121250 in assigned balance and I was assured that it was going to be down 30000 I, I guess I can go back and, and look at the meeting, but I'm, I'm fairly confident that I did not want to budget for police equipment when we had 121000 As a matter of fact, I said, as a taxpayer and as a councilman, I can't see why we would budget 66000 for police equipment when we have 121000 in um, in the assigned balance for police equipment. We'll get back to you on that. There were two pending items in there. One was camera systems that's being carried over. and. We'll need to look into that further. Okay, I'm fine with that, but if you would put it on the agenda for the next meeting and, and um, 
let us know about the 121,000 because I'm fairly confident that that's what I was told and anybody that wants to look at the budget meeting I'm very confident we'll see that. too. I'm done with it. Okay. So are we going to approve that item or approve it at the next meeting? Next meeting when we get a answer to my question. If that's okay with the rest of the city council. Yeah, for next month, yes. Yeah, that's fine with me. Sure. I would like you to note that our audit will be done, will be going on into March. So most of these numbers will change too with reserves. We have a lot of things outstanding right now. Okay. That's just a heads up. Yeah, okay. Okay, Mayor and Council Members report. First on that is a resolution accepting donations. Uh, we've got donations from the Pell Foundation for $3,483 dedicated to benches, $168 for bridge rent, and $79.78 for the Nordic Ridge. Question for me, what is bridge rent? That's what it said on the check, I don't really know. Um, Ted, do you know what the Friday bridge yeah. rents? Oh, okay. Not a physical bridge, huh? Okay. <laughs> okay. G Island. <laughs> okay. All right, so we've got those three items. We need a motion to approve, to accept. I'll make a motion to approve that resolution, accepting the donations from Pell Foundation for benches, bridge rent, uh, Friday bridge rent, and Nordic bridge trails. Second. Marcia Zebra Bowles? Yes. Herzog? Yes. Nevin? Yes. Andrews? Yes. Shrub? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, next we have an application for public fireworks display. Cindy, are you going to speak to this or just let us go? It's for down at the park and rec, correct? This is the official application from the fireworks vendor. It's oh, okay. Yeah. Your name was on it as the applicant. <laughs> it's the fireworks. Yeah. You've already approved the having the fireworks. This is the official permit. Okay, so we need a motion to approve this. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, application for the outdoor public fireworks display. Second. On February 2nd. Aaron Herzog? Yes. Nevin? Yes. Andrews? Yes. Shrupp? Yes. Zebra Bowles? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, Mike, I guess you're up. Mike, before we get to you, um, we missed an item when we got talking about banks that we didn't officially approve for M. Right. A depository, is that something we should do? Maybe? We should have, we should still use 4M in my opinion. Oh, yeah. I don't see that on here. Oh. I'll it make a motion that we France. use the 4M fund too as an official depository for what is it cash. before I get that's carried. the investment account. Okay. And that's through Franston. No. No. That's no. the the lead well 4M through fund the lead. Okay. So a motion to approve 4M. Right, Marshall? 4M fund, yes. Okay, do we have a second? I'll second it. Okay, sure. Dave Nevin? Yes. Andrews? Yes. Shrupp? Yes. Zebra Bowles? Yes. Herzog? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, Cindy. <laughs> okay, Mike. All right, item one under my report is a resolution to approve the waste hauler licenses for 2022. There are three of them. Uh, Waste Partners Incorporated, Pequot Lake Sanitation Limited, and Waste Management of Minnesota, Inc. They're all doing recycling, right? Yes. Okay. I make a motion that we accept all three as waste haulers for the city of Cross Lake. I'll second that. John Andrews? Yes. Shrupp? Yes. Zebra Bowles? Yes. Herzog? Yes. Nevin? Yes. Motion carries. 
All right, item two under my report is to approve the 2022 fee schedule. Most of these items we've talked about at previous meetings. The changes are noted as such in red. I just, I, I have one question um, on uh, the meeting room rentals. Can we, instead of per hour, just do that as a flat rental fee? Instead of per hour. Is that for the park department? That's, uh, yeah, for the, parks, right, it, the meeting room. Can we get room. TJ back in there? I'm here. So, Marsha, you're asking if it's just a flat rate for all groups? Uh, um, the uh, community clubs, nonprofits, and late, I guess I, I'm just saying that can't we just have a flat rental instead of uh, $33 or $20 per hour? Can't we just do $20, chances are, or have it $30 for rental instead of per hour? It might get a little tricky there because people might take advantage of that. I'm not saying they would, but say they rent the room up to eight hours a day, every month, once every month. Um, we're taking away um, room rentals from other groups, um, some of our clubs that are going on, it would get kind of tight. So that's why we have it per hour. So it kind of lets them know, okay, you know, you have your room from, 10 to 12, you're going to pay that rate for per hour instead of just a flat rate the whole day because people would take advantage of it. No, well, I wouldn't go to a meeting that was eight hours. I don't even like a council meeting that's over well, two. So, <laughs> like, like some of our art club meetings, um, we've had some other groups come in and, you know, some church groups have wanted to come in before and they've been wanting to meet for four, five, six hours at a time. Oh. Um, so I think that's where it kind of gets a little dicey. Okay, I guess I didn't realize that uh, that uh, in the past that they've taken advantage of it. I'll let it go. I I, I just thought it was kind of you know they're not always per they're not always meetings. Kinda... They're not always meetings. There's sometimes your gatherings where they're doing I don't know arts and crafts or they're doing some sort of other activity rather than just a meeting. So I would be hesitant towards that. Okay, it was just a question, and I just. Yep. I just thought a flat rate, you know, for civic clubs. That I move we have uh, approved the the fee schedule for 2022 as submitted. I second that with the just correction of the one typo on cornhole. Okay, now I got a little conversation, Cheryl. The septic upgrade new systems. What do we charge right now, currently, for a residential new system? So now in this new thing, we're doing 250 plus the cost of our inspection guy that we right. hired. Right. And who inspected it before? Was that the county that did that? Greg Clausen did it through the county. So the, our only now cost. Now Greg Clausen will do it through the city. Okay, and the county, who paid him when he did it through the county? The county paid them. We did not pay for it at the time. That's a flat rate, right? Yeah. Right. So... Well, why well, don't we just combine that? Well, we don't know. It's it's uh, two fifty plus the cost of the inspection, and I, do we have? I thought right. we had the cost of the inspection, don't we? One hundred and sixty-five is what he said, but that's not to say if he would change his fees. This way, we're covered. Yeah. You yes, know, his I mean, dump site. It just, so it's going to change something. You know, if, if it would happen up, during the year or whatever, we're covered with this, saying whatever he's charging. We bring forth and add to our 250. Are we going to sign a contract with them for a year? That's and then he can. Uh, that's up to you, or uh, well, I think we should have a contract with them. The way the county had handled it is is he showed uh, proof of insurance, driver's license, liability insurance, etc., and then the fees that he charged for his services were passed on to the customer. We're intending to do the same thing here. But so is there going to be a contract signed for a year or something with them, or is it? That's really up to you how long you oh. want, to, want to do that, or you can just appoint him to do it like you do the attorneys. I think we should have a contract with him, and he's got to provide proof of insurance and all that good kind of stuff. I didn't hear you. 
If it's a flat rate and it's discussed already and he said yes, I don't know what the problem would be with um, signing a contract with them and attaching proof of insurance. Contract would be, but what do you think, Brad? Should we sign a contract or just do it like the rest of them? If you charge it, if it's just passed on to the customer, you don't need a contract, but if you want to have that built in and have one number, then that, that will be a difference. Is it you is know. a contract binding to him if he came on some hardship or something and couldn't do it, a performance? Well, most contracts have a right to terminate on notice, or there's, yeah. that would be part of the contract. So we don't sign a contract with Brad. I don't know who else we could compare to that, but it'd be the same kind of thing. Right? Yeah, I don't think you need one. It doesn't mean you can't have one. I mean, I, I, do, yeah. I do think we need to have some of the things that Mike said that they've already asked for. Insurance. Con yes, yeah. but a contract kind of helps you check the boxes and make sure you've done all that. Other than that, it's really an at-will, if he wants to take off someday, we'll have to find somebody else. Yeah, I don't care. You want a contract, Marsha, or don't you care? I, I just think it would be a good thing, but if the rest of the council is fine with it, the general consensus of the council is we don't need it, we don't need it. But I think we should have a contract with them. Anybody else have anything on that? I think we can get by like the other engineering and legal fees. Okay, moving on. Do we have to prove this? Yes, we, we have a motion and a second. Are you ready? Yep. John Andrews? Yes. Shrupp? Yes. Zebert Bowles? Yes. Herzog? Yes. Nevin? Yes. All right, thank you. The third item on my, my report is a resolution for the City of Cross Lake to apply for a Transportation Alternatives Program Grant. Now, we started talking about this back in October, and we're at the, state, at the point now where uh, Tim Bray, myself, and others have the contract ready for submission, and this is the one where we're doing the sidewalks. And so what we're doing is we're just updating the resolution, which is the same resolution we've done for the last... Uh, we did this the only thing we're changing is from 2025 to 2026 and using tonight's date as the, um, uh, the passing of the resolution so I make a motion we apply for the transportation alternative I second that is that good enough Mike that's perfect yep. okay sure Dave Shrupp yes Zebert Foles yes Herzog yes Nevin yes Andrews yes motion carries all right, thank you. The fourth item under my list is a memo dated from me recommending the council accept the Teamsters contract as you negotiated. Um, if you remember the way that worked was we, we went through the collective bargaining process where the city presented, here's what we'd like to see change. The, the union presented, here's what we'd like to change. Um, that's called the collective bargaining process. The negotiation team this time consisted of the entire council. Um, the new contract term is from January 1st of this year through December 31st of 2024. There weren't a lot of changes to the contract. The two biggest things were the wage scale uh, revisions, which represents approximately a 3% adjustment between years, and unused vacation carryover was reduced to 120 hours. So my recommendation is to officially recommend approval of the Teamsters General Local Number 346 contract for renewal for the period January 1st, 2022 through December 31st, 2024. I move we uh, approve the Teamsters contract as submitted. I second it. Marcia Zebra bowles Yes. Herzog? Yes. Nevin? Yes. Andrews? Yes. Shrupp? Yes. Motion carries. All right, thank you. Item five is the, is the uh, liability waiver for the League of Minnesota Cities liability coverage. Right now we're going through the insurance renewal process and the way the question reads is the member, meaning the city, does not waive the monetary liabilities, monetary limits on municipal tort liability established by Minnesota Statute 466.04. Now what that means is we're accepting the statutory limits. If we decide that we want to waive them, that means we can be sued for more and we'll need to go get our own insurance to cover those potential losses. I'll make a motion that we do not waive the monetary limits on municipal tort liability. I second that. 
Aaron Herzog? Yes. Nevin? Yep. Andrews? Yes. Shrupp? Yes. Zebert Bowles? Yes. Motion carries. <laughs> Okay, Mike, that's it for you, Lai. Uh. That's correct. All right, Ted, you've got a couple public works things, huh? Bill, are you gonna do this one or? <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Um, as part of the CASA 66 improvements, we are putting two stormwater ponds in. One of them is located at Simonson Lumber, the other one's located at the Log Church. Um, we had talked with the Simons and Lumber, had a nice discussion with them about what would it take to get a perpetual utility easement for that stormwater pond. They came back with a proposition of, um, they thought the value of the pond was uh, essentially equal to the cost of their connection fee, their sewer connection fee, which for a commercial property is $6,500. So what they would like for the city to do is to um, essentially um, the city would pay them $6,500 for a perpetual utility easement for that stormwater pond as well as take on the maintenance uh, and um, give them uh, an additional couple years to hook up their new facility to uh, the city system instead of and let them use their drain field for two additional years and then uh, they would turn around and pay $6,500 for the sanitary sewer connection. So that's the agreement we brought to Public Works. Um, they recommend it and support that that's uh, a good solution to working with uh, Simons and Lumber to get a perpetual utility easement for stormwater. Can they store their snow in that no. pond? Nope, and we discussed that. Okay, so that's going to be yep. addressed. Yep. What's the Public Works recommendation, please? What's that? The Public Works recommendation. We don't to have approve. any minutes. Um, um, but I, I think it's in here. I just wanted uh, in the record that the yeah, I'll public read it works. To you. I'll read it to you. The Public Works Commission recommends that the City Council support the proposal that the City pay Simonson Lumber $6,500 for a stormwater utility easement for the sewer extension project and that Simonson Lumber pay the City $6,500 for the sewer connection charge. Thank you. I will make that motion. I'll second it. Exactly the way Phil stated it. Dave Nevin? Yes. Andrews? Yes. Shrupp? Yes. Zebert Bowles? Yes. Herzog? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Uh, TJ, you're up, I think, on this. Yep. <clears throat> I have one item for your consideration tonight, and that is to request to declare the concession stand as surplus and put it on uh, govdeals.com to be sold. Um, a little history here. This was purchased early 2000s. Um, it was used back in the day. Now it's in some tough shape. We haven't used it in uh, probably over 10 years. So I'd like to clear up some space and, and get it sold. Where has it been stored, TJ? Down by our shop, just kind of out in the open. Not inside, huh? here. Not inside, nope. Has anybody looked into making a fish house out of it? You'd pretty much have to rip the whole thing apart and build it from the frame up, but I suppose it could be done. All right, I make a motion. We declare it as surplus. I'll second that motion. John Andrews? Yes. Dave Shrupp? Yes. Zebra Bowles? Yes. Herzog? Yes. Nevin? Yes. Motion carries. Next is public forum. No action will up, be taken. Up, up, up. Huh? You don't have uh, the planning and zoning. Let's do that before we. Oh, that was added. Okay. If that's okay with you, Mayor. Yeah, I just <laughs> forgot that you put that on there. My uh, question on planning and zoning, um, basically the interviews and the time and place that are uh, going to take place and um, just wondering if there was, the personnel committee was not involved in it at all. Um, and um, if there was a directive for the city administrator and the city clerk to uh, uh, rate the, the applicants and tell us or share with us who we get to interview. Um, 
I'm not real sure why it didn't come to the personnel committee, but um, I still think that we need to uh, inform the public of time and place for interviews. And if you want to address the lack of the applications going to the personnel committee, I welcome it. We had this conversation last Thursday. Was that our special meeting, January 6th? It was already taken place, that had already taken place. But we had discussed how it happened, why I it don't happened. think we ever said And if we wanted why. to change the process, that's why we brought it to you, and the council voted to proceed with what The three applicants, but in the, in the future, I think with the, um, just that we get things in the future the right way, I think that we need to um, uh, have, especially, with the supervisory department head that has a salary range of between 64,000 and 82,000, I think the personnel committee should be looking at all the applications and rating them. I really feel that the city council should be a part of it. And that's a process that the council should should make. Okay, and that's what, and that's what I'm doing now because week. we fell down not doing it, so I want to make sure that in the future that it goes to the uh, complete council or the personnel. I don't think the city administrator and city clerk should be deciding who we can interview for a department supervisory position when we had more applicants than what was brought forward to us. I'll just say verbally I disagree with that, Marcia. I think that my job as a city council person is to provide guidance and direction to city staff. My job is not to directly run the city. I think the staff has a better idea of what training experience would fit their needs, especially if you have um, administrator involved and other people. So I don't feel I need to run the, the city on a day-to-day -day basis. I just need to make sure that it, it is being run well and provide direction and guidance and improve expenditures. So I disagree. But we don't have a city manager city. That is not what we're about. We're about, um, we're, the city council is responsible for hiring and firing. And we're not even seeing all the applications. I'm not trying to run the city on a day-to-day -day basis and micromanage. I'm just saying that clearly, I think in a, I don't care about um, if we're gonna do a part-time seasonal uh, we don't have to be involved in that, but we clearly should be involved in a department supervisory position. And hence, we're going to have interviews this Thursday. Okay. Marsha, one of the problems I have with that is you're the only person that's ever done the rating that's sitting on this council. But we're quite capable. We're quite capable of doing you're it. the only one that's ever done it. And well, there's a process that's involved with that. And, and sitting down and reading through it in the process. And I'll tell you right now, I, I doubt that any of the four of us sitting on this side would, uh, are in a position to be doing that. You're the only one that's uh, done the rating and understands the process. Clearly, it is an easy process to go through, well, clearly. But, um, for the number but of hirings we do, I, I disagree that it should be there. You don't I think that, that, that you should look at all the applications for a department head? Nope. Okay. When, when, they're, when they're rated and they're sitting there, then I have the opportunity to go through them. And I've hired plenty of people, and I've done that for years and years, and it's been very successful. So you're saying, the council is saying they don't want to look at all the applications? No, why should you? You could get 100 applications in, and you're going to sit down and look at 100 applications? You had five applications. Well, no, but there's a potential, and this is your, what you're talking about goes out further. But I have one other problem with the process. The interviews need to be closed. I, I am absolutely opposed to... You can't uh, close them. Yes, you can. They're done all the time. They become public information once they're going to be interviewed. Their names do. Well, especially if, you have a, especially if you have all five council members on the personnel committee, I mean, that's... We need to have a, a reason to close. and. So, but back to, that, that's a second issue, but I think what staff is trying to say, I've heard some of the frustration about how you saw the applications too. 
but it seems to me the staff should keep doing the same protocol we've always done until you get three votes to change it. And I'm hearing discussion, and I don't know if there's the right answer, but other than three, whatever three people say is the right answer. <laughs> but, you know, the, the staff can't read your minds, or we can't change protocol until we have a, a vote. That's what we're trying to... And that's why I brought it forward, because no, staff agreed. can't read our minds, and I think that we Bringing should take that into consideration. It's just, I still haven't, well, you haven't voted on it yet, but that's, that's, the, big, that's the first issue. So the, is. the, the interviews are public? Well, I could look at that again, and back to, I, um, right now the answer is always yes, they're open, until we can find a way to close them. Because and, I know that uh, the interviews were open for TJ for the park and rec director. I know, because I attended. We, we, well, that's here. We hired police chief, uh, safety services manager, closed the interviews, every one of them. He had, they had to go through three separate committees and be interviewed. Every one of them were closed. I want you to think about, you've got an employee, and we're gonna ask him a question, let's just say something like, you know, tell me about a disagreement you've had and the result with your supervisor. Think about that being asked, and now the supervisor has a right to be sitting there. There's questions that should be asked on that interview process that, I'll tell you what, you'll drive people out of there if you make it public. Well, I'm just, I'm just going by what the law says. It's, I don't think the law says that. I don't whatever think it's, it's worth, law. Marsha, I would like to be a little more part of the process too, but I don't think it's gonna happen. So. No, it's not. But I, I think we do need a I ruling easily, on the open. That's an easy answer. I just wasn't ready to, I didn't have it at my fingertips. So um, I, I guess we should look into whether it's open on, or closed. Is there a way yeah. to structure it so that the interviews can be not open? I can, I can definitely answer that question. But, and the other one, I think there should be a motion, just so there's less confusion here, either to shoot down Marsha's idea or to approve it, one of the two, so that right now I've just heard a little bit of back and forth. Or to table well, it. Go now ahead, and Marcia, make a motion to that. It's kind of hard when you're going to be defeated. That's but um, uh, I will make a motion that specifically department head supervisor positions should be, um, the application should be reviewed by the personnel committee. Uh, the city council doesn't want to be involved, but the personnel committee is willing. I don't know why you wouldn't vote for that. I'll second it. Peshar, go ahead. Okay. Hold on. No. John Andrews. No. Oh. Shrub. I was wondering if we could have a little discussion on. Oh, sure. Oh, sorry. On, um, uh, and don't you think you should address the fact that there, there's a the point system that's being addressed here. I I did that a long time ago, but you're just saying they should be, which applications are going to be reviewed? And are you saying all applications? Yes, for the person, the personnel committee should review the applications, yes. And what are they gonna do? They're going to rate them and then decide who should make a recommendation to the city council who should be interviewed. Okay. So I will have to answer no. Zebra Bulls? Yes. Herzog? No. Nevin? Yes. Motion fails, no. three to two. <laughs> okay. All right, we got that done. Now we go to public forum. No action will be taken on any of the issues raised. If appropriate, the issue will be placed on the agenda of a future council meeting. Speaker must state their name and address. Each speaker is given three minute time limit. Does anybody want to come up? Bob, come on up, please. Uh, too sure if this is going to be appropriate because you've already made a motion and uh, passed it, but it uh, relates to the application for the fireworks. Uh, Winterfest starts on February 3rd and the uh, specific date was uh, February 2nd. And uh, I don't know if that requires a new business, old business, or since the meeting is not closed, if that could be revisited. But uh, 
February 2nd is Wednesday. And uh, is, the, is the application I, 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 wrong? I, I think that I think the date is the wrong is wrong on the on, the, on what you passed. Well, should be the fourth. Cindy's saying it should be the fourth. Well, I don't know when the fireworks are going to be the shut fourth. off, but but it's be, the second is before Winterfest starts. Okay. On the application, is it right? I'll look. We've got the, the motion we right was the, for February right 2nd, and I just, just wanted to bring it to your attention. Off. Yeah, good. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. So can we just amend our motion to uh, you, coincide you with the, the application? Yeah, I think I said and February 2nd in my motion, but okay. if I could change So the that application too. says the 4th. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We're good. Thanks, Bob. Tom? With all the positive stuff that was on the head of the agenda, I decided to wait till the end. Um, first, I want to give a kudos to the public works and park staff for the job they did clearing all that snow. I've been in, in three different cities, and quite frankly, we're spoiled. My, my folks lived in St. Paul. It could snow, and you, you might be lucky to get your, your side street plowed three or four days after. Here, if it's not cleaned up by noon the next day, you start getting phone calls. These guys do a great job on, you know, they're maintaining almost 60 miles of road, and they, they do a great job at it. Next, I watched the January 9th special meeting and I have a couple comments. January 9th? January 6th. January 6th. The 6th, the one last Thursday, yeah. okay. Ted stated he needs more help to keep up with the public works sewer workload. At last Monday's public works commission meeting, one of the equipment operators was in attendance to take the minutes. No reflection on the operator, but this makes no sense financially or efficiency-wise. His workday ends at 3.30, so we're paying an equipment oper operator time and a half to attend a public works meeting um, to take minutes, and then he has to write the minutes. He either does that on, you know, after hours at time and a half, or again, it takes away from Ted's saying he doesn't have enough help and we're using one of his operators to take minutes and then have to spend the time to write the minutes. Um, the commission twice, two, two separate meetings, the commission approved a motion recommending that the city clerk take the minutes. The city clerk is on a salary. The city clerk is here. Um, at the time the meeting starts, her day hasn't ended. So there's no overtime involved. You're, you're dealing with a salaried employee that knows how to take minutes. Um, that motion failed on a three to two vote I know. here at the I, council. I'm just raising it for the public. Yeah. The clerk is a salaried employee, so there's no overtime involved. And if Ted needs more, more help, taking an operator away from his regular duties makes no sense. Last Monday, I was approved or appointed as chairman of the Public Works Commission. I'd like to suggest the Public Works Commission and the City Council have a joint meeting to tour all the city buildings. Marcia and I, when we first were appointed to Public Works, and I think we were both alternates, we asked Ted for a tour of the Public Works facility and the sewer plant. And I think the council, and I, I know we have at least one new public works commission member, I think it would be good for everyone to get a tour, not just the sewer plant, but all those storage buildings down there and see exactly what's in those buildings. Because some of them are just filled with old junk that you don't know what to do with, so throw it in the building. And we're talking about TJ needing more space and like 
the county and the city and moving things. I think we need to see exactly what we have first. Um, and then also- When would you like to do that, Tom? Pardon? When would you like to do that? I don't know, we can, what's convenient for you guys or, or Ted, we can put it on the next public works agenda to, to see what's convenient. Um, yeah, I, I agree with you, but I don't know when we do it. But well, that that'd be good. Tom, can I be? I don't think there's a whole lot on the next public works agenda. I mean, if you wanted to have a joint meeting, the first Monday of February, and and do it at that time, you could. do it an hour early and get Shane or one of the. Tom, can I be exempt something? since I've went through all the buildings? <laughs> <laughs> no, you want to see the current status of them. No one gets out of here. Okay, and then. Also at the meeting, Ted was asked the status of the possible land purchase adjacent to the sewer plant and said that the council would be discussing that in a closed session tonight. I don't see it on the agenda to close the meeting to talk about. Okay, are you gonna close the meeting for that? Okay, because that wasn't listed on the agenda. And then my last comment, your last discussion, when they interviewed me to be the city administrator here, there was an audience out there for, for all of my final interview in front of the council. And um, things changed after I left eight years ago, but the way it used to operate, you had a personnel committee, which was two councilmen. At that point, it was the uh, general manager of the phone company and the city administrator. They would, they would do that and make recommendations to the full council. When the council, and I know you're, you're working on a first contract with the department heads, I think it's foolish that the, the personnel committee is being made up of the full council. And the reason I say that, when, you, when you've been negotiating, with unions, they always have the outlet of, well, we can present this to the, uh, the people for a vote, we can get a tentative agreement, and that's why we had a personnel committee so that you always had that out that um, we'll bring it to the council for a vote. When the full council is sitting there, the unions have you right where they want you. If, if you agree to it, then how do you go back um, whereas if you had a, a personnel committee, and I don't even understand the, the makeup because my understanding is Marsha and Dave Nevin are supposed to be the personnel committee, but all of a sudden the whole council is the personnel committee negotiating with the union. And like I say, the union's got you right where they want you because anything the full council agrees to in a negotiating session, they've the, got the you bottom where line, they've Tom. got the out to say, well, we're not sure this will fly, but we'll bring it back to our people. The bottom line is that the majority of the council and the staff do not think that the personnel committee makeup is good. They don't want it that way. That's why it rolled to the full council. Well, quite went, frankly, went to it's a time the council takes back from the staff. Well, the staff but the majority the of the council agrees with them, so that's yeah. kind of where we're at. But I mean, the, the, the staff is running the city instead of the council running the staff. You know, at, at last month's meeting, her, no, it was at the special, um, the truth and taxation hearing. The clerk said there were two um, written comments and Marcia said those need to be read into the, the council and your clerk said no. And then you bailed her out by reading them. Where does she get off saying no to, to a request by the city council to read something into the record that needs to be read into the record? I mean, this is crazy. Some of the stuff that goes on that um, I just think the council needs to take back control. I don't know how we can do that the way it sits today. Sorry, I believe me, Tom, if we could, I'd be all over it. You saw how the last motion went. Jerry, come on up. Oh, God. Not even anything bad. Jerry Bolt's Bone Beach Trail. 
at the last planning and zoning meeting, we had a guy that came in and got a variance for building a new house. Dave was there. He knows what we're talking about. And uh, we passed it. And then when it came to building it, the contractor noticed there was a 31 square foot awning that was not on the engineered plan. It was on the house plan. And he had to come in and pay the $500 variance fee again. Can't they make that so they have something like that? They could come to the next meeting. It would have been approved anyway. 31 square feet, that's smaller than a kitchen table. And he had to get a variance, go through the whole thing. Go through the whole process? I, Pretty much. I, I was out there at that site, and I agree with you, Jerry. I mean, I can see what, what should be, yeah. is, it should be changed that if it's something little like that, come back, back to the planning and zoning board and, then and make go a over decision. it again. But I mean, I can see like this one, he, we figured pay a hundred bucks to cover the time that was involved in it, but it should have never went that far. It should have just went back to planning and zoning for, and it was a mistake. It was on the blueprint, but it wasn't. So, so they, they said it had to come to the council too. So did oh, planning, yeah. planning and zoning want $100 fee then or no fee, refund well, the whole thing? I would say that this time, because Cheryl had to go through the work of doing it all, that it charged oh, sure. $100 and from now on, just have them come back to the planning and zoning and then who's ever on there can decide what to do. And if they have to get another variance, they can. Yeah, I, I mean, I would agree Otherwise, with that. Otherwise, I mean, it makes it, it was only like yeah. two months before he was in and got it. Uh, he, it what, what had to come to the council is to forgive the $500. Yeah, that's The variance that with, with the commission. So there was no change and I, in I don't know, that guy might be a millionaire that $500 well, but, don't matter to him, but it's just the principle. Well, it's, it, so. it was an odd one that I agree with you, yeah. Jerry. We shouldn't have been out there reviewing it. Make All right. I think once we settle P and Z with staff in it, I think that's one that needs to be worked out. Because it doesn't happen often, but it can. You want to make the motion to refund? Huh? You want to make the motion to refund? Uh, I think Jerry said keep 100 and refund 400. Is that what yeah, I understood, Jerry? Talk about it. Yeah. Hey, Jerry, this is Dave. Say, did is Cheryl there? Did we? Yeah. Right you know, I filled in for Aaron. Was that in the notes? I haven't seen the notes of the meeting. I'm sorry, you're asking if what Jerry's presenting was what is in the minutes? Yes, yeah, exactly. Thanks, Cheryl. Right, correct. That was what was discussed was that Jerry was to come to the city council and present this as a $100 fee and forgive or refund the 400 Okay, that's what we talked about. Yeah. Correct. So, and and I'm, I'll make that motion that we refund 400 to them. We still had a lot of costs involved, so we should take something, but in the future we need to address it so we don't get to that point. As far as the future goes, this is the, I've been here over eight years and this is the first time that it was not put on the certificate of survey. Ah, and there okay. is a checklist that the applicant as well as the surveyor yeah. are supposed to go through, but everybody's human. But like I yeah. said, I've been here over eight years and this is the very first time. Um, it's right in our ordinance, it's state requirements. When you don't meet setbacks, it's a variance. I'm, I mean, that's not my call. Yeah. I'll second your motion. Okay. Thank you. I got missed on uh, stuff. Dave Nevin. Yes. Andrews. Yes. Shrupp. Yes. Zebra Bowles. Yes. Herzog. Yes. Motion carries. Public forum? Are we done? I think we're still on public forum, right? Anybody else want to come up? Troy, come on up. Good evening. My name is Troy Bauk, and I'm the AFSCME Council 65 staff rep that services the contract between Cross Lake and the Public Works employees, as well as some of the city employees for the city council. Um, I'd like to just remind the council that uh, we heard a little bit earlier about the snow and the effort that it takes to clean it up and the job that the Public Works employees uh, do uh, to make sure that this city operates and that the snow is removed and that everything keeps flowing. 
And of course, there's always uh, the element of complaints. Uh, that's part of public works, it's part of anybody's work life. Uh, there's always gonna be a question about did they do it correctly um, or fast enough or was the coffee break too long or was the start time too late? And what I speak to you about is the, a, a friendly uh, comment referencing um, the process by which a complaint comes to the city when uh, a citizen or a councilman brings forth uh, an allegation or a complaint. And that is that uh, when a complaint comes forward that that city employee uh, receives a fair, objective, and impartial investigation that results in a finding of fact. Uh, all citizens, including public employees, are presumed innocent rather than presumed guilty when such complaints come forward. The city has a respectful workplace policy that requires a formal complaint process be followed, which identifies a complainant by name, provides for a fact of statement and witnesses, which then is followed by a fair and complete investigation, which is something I think all of us would expect when there is such an allegation or complaint made against any of us. Isn't that what any of us expect and deserve uh, due process and just cause? And I say that in the sense that I know that complaints come forward frequently to city councilmen, as well as to the city administrator, public works director, uh, and other officials within the city. And I think that the reminder that I'm offering is that this policy exists for a reason. Um, the last thing that anybody wants is that any public employee, any councilman, any representative of this city be unduly criticized or uh, have false allegations that uh, attack their character. Um, and we all know from experience that uh, sometimes allegations can outlive reality. And so if the process is followed, you're minimizing the opportunity for that to happen. And that's just a general comment that I would offer. And I have a, a second topic that I'd like to address quickly. And that is simply that um, I would ask the council to consider that when there are, uh, the hiring process has begun and you're hiring for, in this case, a, a department head, that the ask is, is that if uh, a councilman has uh, business before that department, so there possibly is a direct relationship between that council's, councilman's private uh, affairs uh, and, the, and the job that that department within the city does, that that councilman consider recusing themselves from being uh, in that situation, not for merely an allegation that they're going to act inappropriately, uh, it's to alleviate the the even perception that it's inappropriate. Uh, there are, there's a, a current vacancy that's gonna be filled. The interviews I believe are scheduled this week. Um, and I just think that no one wants that scrutiny, no one deserves it. Um, and I would like to ask for consideration uh, in that process uh, for all of you that the fear of impropriety is probably worse than the reality of it but it can be eliminated by just withdrawing from it. So be specific, Troy. I, I think you're asking me to abstain from voting for the, uh, the new position. Well, uh, as a contractor, what as I would, a builder. What I would say is that it raises questions, and I, I'm not a, by any means um, somebody that has specific knowledge of exactly the relationships and the permits and the processes that the city follows, I can only say that there's an implication that if a person such as you that were a private builder and you're, uh, I don't know how frequently a builder works with the planning and zoning department, I, you know, what permitting process is, but the assertion is, is that the face of impropriety exists and rather than have it uh, in the background and in the, in, in, you know, behind the back, I would just say that let's address it and nix it. That's just my opinion. I have no uh, authority to make that demand of you. It's just to ask for courtesy. Yeah, but as long as you're here, I just want to be clear about it with the council here. Yes. So. Uh, it, it, again, uh, I'm a person that believes in transparency. Uh, and I also believe that when information is circulating that it should be shared, so. Yeah, okay. I think our city attorney should address that. Sure. Right now or? In a memo, yes. what would you like? Yes, no. Um, well, I, I agree with the principle that when it's um, 
it, debatable, and I'm not suggesting this one is, but to, whenever there's an appearance that it potentially is an issue, it's always safe to, to abstain. If you were asked me to comment on directly, is this a conflict of interest from what I am thinking through the situation, I would say no. Um, I, I, don't, I, I do believe there is a potential perception of that from what little I know of what he would do in the, his private practice and relations with PNZ, but there's no personal, but I, I don't think that the, the, yeah. the black and white le letter law of conflict of interest no. It's not going to put money in his pocket. I, yeah. I don't see a official conflict. So just before you leave, Troy, just we could talk. And you could look into it. You could come back with an opinion later if well, you want to. But I think he just gave us one. Yeah, but I just wanted to make sure that you were clear. Well, I don't, it's not going to change, is it? No I don't think conflict? it's going to change, although okay. that's off the cuff, you know. Thank you. Thank you. Public forum, does anybody else want to come up? Not seeing anybody, we're going to close public forum. Brad? Uh, basically, what we were hearing earlier, I, Ted did ask me to see if he, he, he was presented with a potential offer to acquire some land for city purposes. So I'd like to go into closed session to review that offer or see if you want a counter offer. So we should do the new business, old business first, and then... That's up to you, but before we're done today, I'd like yeah. to go into closed I session. I think out of so. respect to the audience, we'll ask for new business or old business. And if not, we're going to have to go into closed session. I have, I have some new business. Okay. Um, I've uh, debated with myself, you know, for a while on this. Um, I'm not quite understanding why... The city council um, is not paid for special meetings. And I'd like the city council, you were in the past, reinstate that. Uh, we had 35 special meetings in 2021. I'll tell you why, Marcia. Uh, before, when Patty was here, it, we used to have up to four meetings. Dave, correct me, $20 each meeting in addition to? At a cap of four meetings. At a cap of four meetings. Yeah. And so when Patty was here the last time she changed it, she added $50 to each month for each person. I think she increased the pay. $80. Oh, $80? Yes. Okay. So she so added the $80. $80 were just included instead of you guys individualing them out because there were so many. So it is the first of the year. I mean, if you want to. Well, I'd like you know, the public should know this. We get about 500 bucks a month, and we put about 23 hours a week into doing this. I'm just saying, and so. it can't go into effect until November 8th after the next election. Yeah. So I'm just saying, 35 in meetings in 2021, and I don't know of cities that don't pay their council people. And it's not really about the money, but still it's it's like that's probably 70 extra hours because we never get out of here in an hour i'm I, just saying i would like the city council to consider reinstating the special meeting pay i had calculating my income here at a dollar 37 an hour and that was before i had to go hire an attorney for 2500 dollars to to fight a city issue here so, so it's going to take me three more terms, I think, to get back to even <laughs> um, <laughs> for whatever that's worth. So you're saying we get paid about thirteen dollars a meeting. I'm not. I'm. I'm not even calculating it out. I'm just saying that other other city councils get paid. Well, because for special we love meetings. it, right, Mark? Yeah, I love it. <laughs> yes. Um, so I would like that to. I know it's new business. So if we could put it on the agenda and consider it at the next meeting. I appreciate it. There's no big rush because we can't do it until after the next election, which would be Well, we should do November it now. Taking well, we can do it the and then election. make it effective November, I don't know, 8th or 9th. It would be effective next January. Yeah. After the new people are sworn in. After the next election. That's what it says in the after the next election, but that's here nor there. And the other thing I have is that, oh, that's old business, I'll let you go. I, I have something on new business. Okay. There's no plaque out here saying when this building was built or who was involved or anything else. 
maybe we should. Mike, would you be willing to take a look at that and help us out with that, please? Is everybody in agreement with that before? I think we should have a sign on the north end of town saying that welcome to Cross Lake coming in too. I think that'd be kind of good. <laughs> I do have another new business. When you're done. Well, I think everybody agreed. I think Mike noted that down. Yeah. Right, Mike? Yeah. yeah. My other thing is, is I would like to have the city release my email account so I'm in charge of it. Uh, I'm willing to pay the $5.99 a month because I don't feel like the, the city should be reading my emails. <laughs> I don't like it. It has nothing to do with what I say or anything, but if a citizen emails me, the city can go in there and read it. And I'm more than happy, especially if we get special meeting pay, uh, to pay the $5.99 a month for my city email account because I don't want somebody reading my emails. That's the same thing as reading my mail. I don't want it. I don't. Unless it's court ordered or something? Well, court ordered, then, then yeah. And I have a, mo I just want, I want, I want the city to release my email account so that I have control of it. You can still use it. People can still email me on it, but no one's going to read those emails but me. So if I need a motion to do that, to have uh, the city release my email account? I, that's I, well, I, the one thing that comes to mind is data. If someone makes a data request, um, would Char be able to comply if we don't have that account access that re well that request comes to me and I'll bring it forward I don't want the city reading my emails I, no I understand your first point my second point is are we gonna have are we gonna trust that council members are gonna retain emails which I, I would not trust that's not about Marcia that's about knowing <laughs> how private people handle an email um, because that is potentially public data I will hold the emails I will never but delete them. That's my only comment. I, I don't really care how you vote. I'm just making sure you hear that, that that's potentially a, a, well, an issue. Okay, I would like to make a motion that the city releases my email account, Volts Council or Council Volts, whichever it is, and allow me to pay for it and be in charge of it without the city having access. Yeah, I, I would second that. I don't know if it's a legitimate request or I don't know if it's... It's the only way I'll keep my emails private is if I pay for it and I'm willing to pay for it. But I don't think you can keep them private if there's somebody that wants to get if into there's, them. Now if on a daily browser, I don't know, do you guys go through and read our emails on a daily browser? We have no access to your emails. You do, you do, because I asked Cross Lake Communications and they said you have control, you know my password, don't tell me you don't, <laughs> because I just okay. got that information today. Okay, I won't tell you that, I don't know. Yeah. I don't want to be responsible for keeping official emails for data, a case that needs to be released for data purposes in the future. So I would like to keep it as they have it currently because well, I don't want to get messed this up. This probably sounds petty or like a nuisance, like is what I'm hearing. And I, it would feel like that way if I was a council member probably. But if, they, if you're worried that someone's going to talk about something more personal, ask them to email you on your, I assume you have a personal email account. But yes, I do. But if someone's emailing you your, your capacity as city council, that potentially is public data that we need to find a way to retain. And that's why you have a Cross Lake uh, address. Or go yeah. into the phone company and change your code on your city. I think you could do they that. They can go in. They can go in and look at your password. <laughs> it doesn't help. <laughs> I don't know. Would you all like people to be reading your emails? Not me. I'm sorry, but I would. all I'm asking, I will not delete any emails. All I'm asking is that I have, I'm the only one that has access to my emails, and if you need my emails for some reason, they're going to be boring. But you can uh, you can get an attorney and ask me for them. As a city employee, I assume that everything I do is I'm at, that I'm at a fishbowl and that everything's public. So that's how I've always dealt with my life as a Fed and as a state employee and as a university employee and as a Cross Lake employee. Yeah, I. 
I mean, if that's a motion, you want me to second it, we'll vote on it if you want. I don't know that it really matters at the end of the day. You know. But David, could I talk? I, I agree absolutely. with what John said. I don't write anything in there that is detrimental. I, if it is, I don't write, I don't think that way. Anybody could read the emails that I write, I'm fine with that. I do not think that we should have a special situation just for one council person. That's not right. Okay. Well, I want you to understand that if you do that, Marsha, all they're going to do is they're going to come in, they're going to get a search warrant, they're going to walk into your house, and they're going to take your computer slash computers. They can go to Cross Lake Communications and get it. I'm not trying to hide anything. Yeah, this but, is just but, a, a a personal thing for me. It's the same thing as somebody coming and reading my I really mail. I don't care. If you want it closed off, but understand there's... Yeah. There could be consequences, which is... I'm not getting rid of the email address. I'm just getting rid of the city having access to my password okay. and sure. going in there. Go on. I don't care. Can I make a comment? Absolutely. Come on up. But you got to come up and tell us who you are. Yeah, the more jump into this, the better Connecto off it is. <laughs> 36084 County Road 66 Cross Lake. Um, Marsha, I'm also an employee at a church, and I have a church email. And anything that comes in on the church email is open to anybody who wants to read it. Anything that comes into the city email should be available to anybody. If you want, if you don't want that information out there, then tell the person to email you privately. But you are a city council member, and I firmly believe that any email that a person emails you here regarding city business is public. Well, okay. I, now people know that you know your emails could be read, so be careful what you email. Yeah, I don't think we email each, read each others, but somebody certainly can. Yeah, it's a city email. Okay. Are we done? Another defeat. <laughs> what, I hate to say, old, old business. <laughs> Did you say old business? Somebody have some old business? Yeah, I do. <laughs> Right. Well, you might as well just take care of it. Um, at the improvement hearing, truth and taxation improvement hearing, um, uh, we discussed uh, keeping track of uh, snow removal on the trails. Um, can I make a motion that we set up an expenditure account for that, for wages, and one for maintenance and supplies? I think we've asked them to track it, did we not? I think I'm making a motion to that effect to establish a, an expenditure account so we'll see it on our financial statement. Snow, re snow okay. removal wage and snow removal supplies and expense. All right, I'll second that motion. So can I ask a question? What, what do employees in each department write on their time cards right now? You're asking me that? I think he's asking. No, I'm asking the I'm asking the staff, Ted. You know what is and, and maybe TJ? Did they just write eight hours down and that's it? Yes, sir. It's just eight hours. Whether it's public works, sometimes if we do something for the park, it's a couple hours that gets to the park, or the same thing with the park to us. But it's just eight hours under snow so removal. Just, we don't have anything to split you. out snow removal. We don't think for tree removal or emergencies, it's all one pocket. So this is that was this would be something to dividing it down even further. And it would be something that they, they'd have to set up accounts in there and somehow break it down in codes that we could identify trail maintenance or whatever, or trail ice snow removal. Product used. Well, you know, I mean, that brings up a good point. Is there a reason we would want to track time at sewer, on roads, on trails, plowing for a time study or something? I mean, I, I don't know that this is the meeting to do that at, but I would support something like that. We don't have a clue what anybody does. Right? Can I add that? Can I add to something? Sure, yeah. My staff, we developed a spreadsheet when you guys wanted me to identify how long it takes to clear Daga Trail during COVID, and we wanted to open that up. So we've continued to do that process, and I also have a 
um, sheet that I made up where my staff writes down what they do every single day, and I have all that information. So. I appreciate that, TJ. I think that's awesome. That's great. Could, could we see how that works out for well, us? And then it's I think we had a spreadsheet last year. The, the whole thing is, is that we're trying to determine whether we want to remove snow on the trails. And the way to do that is to find out what it's costing us. And it can't be that tough a deal to, on your timesheet, say, I put four hours in on snow removal on trail and then coded out snow removal trail. I think it'll be it's not I that do difficult. Have, I do have a question when you talk about on roads or blacktop patching or shouldering or. I mean, wouldn't that be good at the end of the year to at a glance sort of see what you do? I've worked for cities where we had it was all broke out, and I've worked for cities that was just one part. I make a motion that we do that. We ask the department heads to keep track of their time, do a time study. Well, Marcia has a motion on the floor. Oh, I'm sorry. And you seconded it. Okay. Then you can do your. <laughs> okay, go ahead. It's approaching that time. So, are you guys ready? You can you repeat TJ, the did motion, you have any please? Okay. TJ wasn't going to add anything. Okay. I was just going to ask, when we talk about these snow removals of the trails, you talk about salary and um, product usage or, you know, any other costs associated with that. How nitty gritty are we going to get? I mean, we sometimes lay down salt. We have to replace our um, blades on our uh, plows. I mean, how in depth do we want to get with that? Because it could get pretty. I would detailed. say take an educated guess at it, TJ. You know okay. about how much time you're doing. Okay. It'll all work out in the wash. I don't think you'd favor one over the other, right? It doesn't matter to you. Mr. Mayor? Yep. Out of the cities that work where we actually went, fuel would go to stone removal or it would go to this truck or that truck. So you can hold all accounts accountable. Yeah, I, I hate to burden you so. You know that you're spending half your day trying to figure out what you're doing, but you know, just in general, I, I think it'd be a good idea to. Okay. Yeah, Dave, but we have a vote yeah, we have a motion here. Sorry. We have a motion to um, create an expense account for clearing of the trails, including the wages and costs of the products. Okay. That's costs of stuff. Okay. I do have one comment on that. I think with our systems limitations, I think a better way to do that would be to set up a project. So we do have the ability to look into setting up projects for different things. One of them could be snow removal for trails, or we could develop a project and then we could do accounting based on that project and it would get all the costs, not just that. And you wouldn't need to go retool your entire general ledger for how, to, how much do so we spend. So we leave it up to trails. staff the best way to do it? Whoops. You can't just put two line item expenditures on your expenditure report? We can do that, but it's okay. more than just two simple line items. We have to retool our payroll system to attract that uh, for each department and every employee. So, so your payroll doesn't let you code what department it's going to, the wages? What it does, department it's it going to? It does it by department, but it doesn't do it per job that they're doing. But you, you can't put wages, snow removal, and put it in payroll. Not, how do you do the know, art? How do you do your streets and wages? It's all it's grouped in. It's one it's just thing. Streets. No track. Street wages, there though. One. No. There's no breakdown, Marcia, between sewer and streets or shouldering right. or anything. That's all I understand. Well, yeah. The other thing, that you, the other thing that you have to decide on is what is the, what's going to be the cost per hour. You can't just use their pay. You have to add in all of the benefits that they have, and and you're you're going to be shocked at what that cost is. But that would be part of the wages, is that the right. FICA and the Medicare and the would yeah. would both be vacation, part of that hospitalization, right. all of the stuff the city pays for. Yeah, I think to do the time study first, Dave. At least we got it broken down. Then, however, I we, think so. Yeah. Well, I think we should use what we have available. That, that makes sense to me. And should we try it just for snow removal? That's what you know, yes, and that's what we're trying to establish. We have a budget for 
the wages for street removal or for streets maintenance and for sewer and all that. We have a budget for that, but we do not have a budget for uh, trails snow removal. Right, but so so what this would be is just tracking the cost because we don't have a budget for either one. Yes, it's not mandatory that we do those trails. Don't you think we should know what it's costing? I think we should. But Marcia is asking to keep track of the trails. I think if we can get through this motion, then I might follow it up with one with Ted and TJ's already doing it to track more stuff. But right now we're dealing with just the trails, I believe. This motion. Yep. Yeah. So we got a motion and a second. Zebra Bowles. Yes. Herzog. Yes. Nevin. Yes. Andrews. No. Shrupp. Yes, as long as it's in the system that we have. Okay, motion carries. Uh, I'm gonna make a motion to ask all the departments, but primarily Ted, because TJ appears to be doing it, but to keep track of different things that you're doing it and, and work with staff to come up with a good way to do it. You guys figure out how to do it. Yeah, okay. Okay, Dave, can I ask you to hold off on a motion on that? Because I think we need to have discussion on what we actually want them to do, because what you're asking for is basically an hour by hour accounting of what they are, and that is not a timesheet. That is a log sheet. Huge differences. Um, so we is that need what to I'm asking you to do, Ted? I think kind of what Aaron's saying you're asking me is, is a kind of accountable for what we're doing. All right. Where we're at today. We, we need to sit and have a discussion. When would you like to have that, that discussion? <laughs> Name it. Not the 21st. I'm just going to tell you, not the 21st. Not the 21st, okay. Can't we ballpark it? Huh? It's Can't just, we ballpark it? I don't know that it has to be that difficult. It's just, you know. Well, it's, it's, it's very involved. So you, you need to. I'm not at, okay. And it, it would go not just public works. It would have to probably go citywide. Well, the park and rec is already doing it, it appears. If, if Ted follows TJ's lead at the park and rec, do it the same oh, format, that's... But I think where you're trying to go, I believe where you're trying to go is differently, Dave. I'm not trying to crawl into the weeds too deep on it. It's just general. How much time? Yeah. You know, I am. Okay. But if we could hold off on that one, I'd appreciate it. Okay, Aaron, well, I would appreciate it if you would set up a meeting then so that we could discuss it so that it doesn't get kicked down the road I'll work, I'll until work next year at this time. How's that? Okay. Any other old business? Okay, folks, I think we're going to have to kick you out of here for a closed session. Thank you all for coming. You need to stop it and then restart it so we can segregate the tape. Can't you just leave it go? We'll all leave and just leave it record? You can't, then you'll have two postings. Oh, you're right. You need separate files. That's all you have to do.